Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come before the Lord, knowing that we are weak and sinful, asking for His mercy and forgiveness as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this, on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the fault-finding of the children of Israel, and because they put the Lord to the test by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Oh, oh that, that today, today you would listen, listen to his voice. Harden not, not your hearts. hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy in the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. Oh, that, that today you would listen, listen to, to his, his voice. voice. Harden, Harden not your hearts. O oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, oh that, that today you would listen, listen to his, his voice, voice, harden not, not your hearts. hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, oh, that today, today you, you would, would listen, listen to my voice. voice. Harden, Harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope 
of sharing the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were yet helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Lord, you are truly the Saviour of the world. Give me living water, that I may not thirst. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time Jesus came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? and his sons and his cattle. And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never thirst. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me the water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. This you said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came. They marveled that he was talking with the woman, but none said, What do you wish? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went into the city and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile the disciples begged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone 
brought him food. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor, others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know this is indeed the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've just heard what is perhaps one of the most powerful accounts in the Scriptures, a beautiful story, narrative in the Gospel of John. And to try and preach on this text, I think, is probably to fail because there are layers and layers of meaning more perhaps than we ever have time to cover in just a few minutes. We need to sit with this text and put ourselves into the scene and allow it to speak to us. There are just three Lenten lessons that I want to draw from this Samaritan woman, ones that we can hopefully take away for our reflection. Notice, first of all, how Jesus, on his journey, sits down at the well. And notice how this unnamed woman, there are so many unnamed people who come to Jesus, unimportant people, finds Jesus there. Jesus sitting and waiting. I wonder how often we think we have to find God. We have to go and look for God. The way we use language sometimes suggests that it is up to us to go and to find God. It's somehow my efforts or my initiative that finds God, that puts me into God's presence. The Samaritan woman discovers that Jesus the one at the end of that text that she calls the Messiah, the Christ, is waiting for her. She discovers him in the ordinary and maybe even the mundane of her life, going to the well to get water, a thing she probably did every day for survival. In this time of Lent, can we Allow God to find us where we are. God in the ordinary of our lives, in the daily mundane tasks, in the places and perhaps even the people, we might not have thought that God could be waiting for us. Where is God waiting for you? The second reflection I want to offer are the words of Jesus. He says to the woman, give me something to drink. Notice the thirst that Jesus has and her own thirst to recognize her true identity, her authentic self. Jesus initiates that dialogue. He talks about his thirst for water, she assumes. But really what Jesus wants her to do is recognize her true self, the person that she has lost for whatever reason in the struggle of her life. He knows too that she is thirsting 
and yearning for authenticity, for a different way of life. In this time of Lent, God thirsts for us. God says, give me a drink, as God invites us to recognize what we have lost in ourselves, who we really are. In other words, Jesus invites her to see herself as God sees her. And so in Lent, we are invited to see ourselves as God sees us. And so that question, what am I yearning for? What do I want? Where is it that my authentic self is? Is the question we being invited to interrogate in this time of Lent. We, like that woman, find ourselves in the midst of conflicting and confusing desires. We are prodded and lured and tricked even, seduced by so much in our world today. At times, we don't know what we want. We think we do, but we get it wrong. And so we get ourselves into a mix and maybe even a mess. We land up maybe like that woman, confused and hurt, seeking fulfillment in places and maybe in relationships that are not life-giving. The woman engages with Jesus about her thirst, her desire. She questions, she ponders, she argues, she demands even from Jesus. How do we, or are we, engaging with God this Lent about our own thirsts? And third and finally, those simple words the woman hears from Jesus. You don't have one husband, you have five. The woman tells Jesus that she does not have a husband when he asks. And he retorts that she has had five and the one she is with now is not her husband. It's a bit shocking that Jesus engages with her. We know that she was less inclined to engage with Jesus. We also know that at the end, the disciples are surprised that Jesus is engaging with with the Samaritan woman. How, frankly, can he mix with her? Isn't that a wonderful lesson for us? Despite her far from perfect life, her messy life, her questionable life, she cannot be blocked or shunned from Jesus. So often we think we have to have it all in line. It has to be perfect before God comes near. The Samaritan woman teaches us that Jesus draws near in the mess and the muck of our lives. I wonder what mess and muck at this point in your life might Jesus be sitting close to, wanting to enter as he did with that Samaritan woman. Will you, like her, let him in? Let's respond to God's word now by making a profession of faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word. We now respond to that word in bringing our prayers, our needs before the Lord. For the whole church, that all who follow Christ may be a source of encouragement and strength for those seeking conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those preparing to receive the sacraments at Easter, that they may be fully open to God's grace and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For governments and legislators, that they may work to establish and protect the dignity and equality of women in society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Church, that we too would strive to make sure that we honour the women in our midst by recognising their gifts and giving them their rightful place in our own structures. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own community, that, for each one of us, this time of Lent may continue to be a time of deepening relationship with the Lord who sits and waits for us, despite the messiness that we experience in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick or suffering, lonely or bereaved, that the Lord will bring healing to the sick comfort to the dying, conversion to sinners, and light to those experiencing darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our humble petitions, and we make them in faith and confidence through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine. Work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with angels praise your mighty deeds, as together we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let's take a moment to offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful. And in your kindness, grant that your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.